Hi, it's JJ with PC Racing and Ultra Cool Oil Coolers. I want to show you the all new lower fairing mounted Ultra Cool Oil Cooler system. Now, we've had a system out for the lower fairings, liquid cooled bikes, etc., um, since 2019, but you had to completely cut the air door out of the lower fairing and it mounted to the frame, sat at an angle, didn't really look particularly good. It works fantastic. But we had a lot of customers say, hey, we want to put this on our bike. Our bike runs hot. We really need it. But uh, can you come up with something a little bit cleaner lo uh, looking? So we did. So here, here it is. So this is what we're, what we're doing now is actually mounting it into the lower fairing. So we're, we're cutting the air duct and the air door out. And the ultra cool oil cooler mounts inside here. A little bit of a trimming on this piece here. But uh, the end result is just fantastic. It use, utilizes the air duct for, for the air door. Um, looks like it belongs on the bike and just has a, a great look to it. So I'm going to show you now how to go from the stock system here with the air door and how to, how to uh, take that out and do the trimming that is necessary to get the ultra cool mounted inside here and get your bike ultra cool. Let's get started. Okay, so the first step of installing the ultra cool lower fairing mounted oil cooler is how the heck do you get this lower fairing apart? The tools you will need to do that job are a 7 16 uh, socket with a ratchet and extension, uh, 25, 27, and 40 Torx, half inch wrench, and a putty knife or a chisel. And we're actually gonna separate the uh, double-sided tape uh, on, on the two pieces that come from the factory. And we do give you new industrial tape to glue it back together when it's all done or tape it back together. The first thing I'm gonna do is, you could use a little screwdriver. Um, you have a speaker, whatever, you gotta take it out. But this, this stock little cover just pops out. There's uh, a couple of uh, uh, pop-in pieces here. Um, you know, just be careful not to uh, scratch it so you don't have to be too aggressive but just three pinpoints that uh, pop out and then that's out and that gives you access to start removing other items so once that's out there is a bolt or a nut deep inside here seven sixteenths that's holding a little cap on the outside i already got it loose so to make this simpler once that's loose then the outer cap will come off and it kind of uh, fits in and snaps in usually or but that bolt holds it holds it on so that's off of there and now you can see this your your crash bars here holding it on but we're not going to take that off till the end um, so the next step is um, to remove this air door pivot area it's kind of a rubber piece and with that we're going to use the 25 Torx and there's three bolts down in here one two three so I'm going to set it down so I can work on it here so of course this is all going to be done on your motorcycle because it's mounted to the crash bar We bought an awful lot of these lower fairings and cut them up in different ways to find the best way to do this. All right, so once those three are out of there, this piece here is now loose. And it does snap in, so we're gonna pop it out. Now you've got the air door pivot arm holding it. And we can separate that. We're gonna, what we're gonna do is pinch it and pull it out. So now this whole piece is off. We're going to take the 25 or the 25 torques again. And that way you can get the little um, arm off or the little handle off of here. You won't need this anymore. All right, so now this piece is off, and later on we'll show you how to make the little cut here um, for the uh, ultra cool system to fit on, the oil cooler to fit on there. Okay, now we've got the, uh, 
the air door here and how this comes off. So the air door itself, you really just kind of kind of flex it. Let me pull it out. And then the, uh, is it the top or the bottom? I think it's the top, yeah, it pops off. And then that comes off. So I basically just gotta kind of flex it and bend it and pull that out. Now this piece here, if you get it into the right position, you'll see it lined up. You can pull that out. And now there's uh, another 7 16 nut here, and then a T27, two hexes here. So we'll get the 7 16 onto this piece. So all this has to be done, if you got a water-cooled bike, and most of you probably do, you're going to have your, your radiator lines uh, coming through here and down here. Of course, when you're all done, those don't interfere with the new ultra-cool oil cooler, which is really nice. But you got to take these pieces of the lower fairing off, and of course, our installation guide will have step-by-step -step color photos of everything I'm showing you here as well. Of course, videos are, are really nice. So there you go, this whole piece comes off. You will see exposed, uh, if it's liquid cooled, you're gonna have your radiator and fan here. All that stuff is gonna stay on the bike. You're not gonna uh, have to disconnect the, the radiator, the, the, the water lines for the radiator. They'll kind of hang on uh, the bike still, and you're gonna, um, once you get it to this point, um, I'm gonna show you how to finish taking it, taking it off the, the crash bar but you'll pull this lower fairing off. You'll install the ultra cool oil cooler after we make the cuts and everything, and then you'll put it back on, um, all leaving the water cooling intact, which is a nice thing not to have to mess with that. So now you've got these pieces off. You have 7 16 nuts and a little clamp here holding it to the crash bar. So that comes off. And then on the bottom, you're gonna have a little uh, strap bracket or a clamp that goes under here and a 40 hex with a half inch nut uh, to take that off. And then once that's off, you'll be able to take this whole piece off the motorcycle. And again, leave, leaving the water cooling. So now we're gonna get into some more, a little bit trickier part uh, of this install. And this was the same, well, this part here. The grill, if you go on the, the bended side, you can take a little screwdriver, or I'm using this little uh, chisel, pops it out, and then it'll just pop back in place. So this inner air door ducking is just industrial double-sided taped in here. You got uh, little pieces here and a couple strips here. I'm just working underneath there, wiggling it loose, and you can see it's just it's just taped. So now there's another piece of tape here. The whole top piece is pretty much loose already. And just uh, don't get too aggressive, but you're you want to get to this industrial tape. So now I've got it separated. Now I can get my putty knife underneath here. You can also use uh, this little chisel. it just goes slow it's pretty strong plastic it's actually very strong plastic but it's foam industrial double-sided tape which we are going to give you um, industrial double-sided tape to replace this and put it back together when this uh, mod is all finished Got it popped apart and you can see there's a couple pieces of industrial double-sided tape here and here and that's that's all that was holding this piece in and now we're going to modify this air ducting so that we can mount the ultra cool oil cooler you do, you do want to take a chisel or something and and uh, scrape off the old uh, uh, 
double-sided tape uh, residue. I'll save you the time. You can do that and get it nice and clean because we're going to put new tape onto the painted one and it'll stick together. But uh, one of the first steps uh, of actually modifying this is we're going to give you a template, a paper template that you'll carefully cut out and you're going to tape it along here. You know, put a piece of tape here and here and then you'll trace the exact cut that we want you to make for the ultra cool oil cooler to fit in. And then you're going to make a, a two inch uh, measurement here and then you're going to go from the bottom. And so this piece here is in the way. We want a straight line from down here um, to the two inch mark. And so we're going to cut that off. And then on this side, we're going to go an inch and a quarter mark down from the bottom. And again, this is in the way. So we're going to just get a new um, hacksaw blade, even a, a, a bimetal one or a multi-purpose one's fine. You'll be surprised at how easily these cut. But um, I'm just wearing gloves and I'm going to show you how easily um, you, you can cut this. So I want to hold the blade flat and just start working, working into it. And this whole thing will cut off of here. So again, we're just getting that out of the way so that we can make a nice uh, straight line mark to cut from approximately here and here. So now we're gonna do the same on the other side. And none of this is gonna show, so don't worry about how like, I'm scratching this and that. It's all gonna get covered in the final process. Okay, so we got that off of there. And again, we're just getting that out of the way so that we can make a straight line mark from basically there and there. And it was just in the way from us making a good mark and starting our important cuts on this fairing. We'll, be, we'll mark this uh, air door duck so that we can cut it into the shape to fit the ultra cool. Now we are gonna give you a template that you're just gonna put a piece of tape on the end, lay it flat in here, Cut this template out very carefully so it's accurate. And um, you'll tape it, and I've just traced it with the fine point uh, Sharpie marker, and that's gonna give you these points. On this side here, we wanna mark an inch and a quarter, and then I drew a line from the end of my template, which is about a half inch up from there, to my inch and a quarter. I don't know if you can see that line. And then I just hand drew a straight line up. And this, this bend can be over a little bit. It fits well. On this end, again, the template's going down to about a quarter of an inch on this side. And then I made a mark at two inches here. And then I just drew the straight line from the quarter inch uh, up off of there to my two inch line. And then I hand drew it here. Now this side here, we do wanna cut it really right on the bend because we want it to be flat and flush. It'll fit nicer with the ultra cool when it's mounted. If you don't, it's kind of hard to cut it on the bend. So if you cut it out here, you can pretty easily with the razor knife, trim that down and get it flat and that's okay. So we'll uh, uh, just peel off our, our template and you can see that it's, it's marked here for the cut. And the first thing I'm gonna do, I'll put my gloves on and then I'm gonna real carefully trace my marks and just score everything with the razor knife um, real carefully, all the cuts that we're gonna make. And you'll see that this razor knife, a new blade can actually do a lot of cutting, um, especially once you get it in, like just to cut straight down here 
or to make this cut here. It'll cut through pretty good. But we're gonna do some other things and you may have some uh, better tools, but we like to suggest tools that are pretty common for that most people might have. So I'm gonna start scoring this up and then we'll get back to the cutting it nice and clean. Get to the fun part of uh, trimming this air duct. I have went ahead and scored it and you can see and the reason I'm scoring it is so that I'm gonna heat this knife up and I'm gonna trace it, but if you score it, those grooves from the scoring will keep you in line. So before you get aggressive on making any cuts, go ahead and score it, and then you will have um, a nice groove to stay in, and it'll keep you more in line and make things a little bit easier. And that's why I like to spend that little extra time uh, doing that. So here's a little tip. Now you can use any kind of cutting tools you wanna to do, but uh, this, this works really well. We got a little propane torch here. And what I'm gonna do is heat up the blade of, of the razor knife. This is a brand new blade. And you can see it gets hot pretty quickly. You don't need to keep it, look at this, red hot. And particularly, these little 90 degree bends, little small ones, I wanna get those. I wanna get it uh, nice and hot and it'll melt in here pretty good for these cuts. I'm gonna push pretty good and try to get that cut in there. Now it cools off fast, so you gotta keep it going and, and keep it hot and try to get it down in there. There we go. So I'm gonna make that cut and then I think I'll make uh, this side over here as well. But this will speed it up. Now you can cut this whole thing with a razor knife just slowly and carefully and you don't have to heat it up. Notice we do have a fire extinguisher here. We don't need anybody burning down their garage uh, installing it. That's definitely not ultra cool to burn down your garage. But uh, practice uh, some safe procedures here and you'll find that this works pretty darn well, at least for these small cuts. And then once you get to a cut in there, the blade itself, a nice sharp razor blade, can cut through this. But it's kind of hard to really get precise like this little 90 degree that I want you to cut here. So we're gonna let, and see I broke off the tip of the, of the blade or it's bent. So um, kind of watch that and um, you might have to use another one, let it cool down and, and get another one in there. But mainly the heat is what's gonna get that going. So I've, I've ruined the tip of this, so I'm gonna let it cool down and then we're gonna continue on and do, doing some cutting. So I put a nice new blade in here, but before I heat it up and start trying to melt it, um, you'll find that a nice, sharp blade new one will cut really nice so i'm going to show you that um, this is a straight cut down this side and i'm going to kind of knife it that's why they call it a knife i guess just kind of push it and and get down to my spot i'm watching my mark so i don't go too far but that's my uh that's my inch and a quarter cut right there that i just did with a knife with the blade, I didn't have to heat it up. And again, the heating I like just on these 90 degrees. You can do it without it. Um, I'm all, you know, again, so this side here, so if you can get where you can really use the blade, now remember I wanted to cut down, I'm gonna try to cut down um, this bent side and it's going pretty well. And I may have to shave this side because I want it flat. And I'll show you what I mean by that. I'm going down to my two inch mark here. Remember I scored it so I know exactly where I'm at. So what I mean, this side has a little lip on it and that, and that fits in nice. We're gonna put washers actually underneath this lip, gives it some strength. But this side here, the lip is okay up here but we want it nice and on the bend here so that it fits, uh, um, doesn't push out too far, hitting the ultra cool fan bracket. So I'm just gonna keep working on this. And again, you don't have to do anything crazy. You probably, a lot of you professionals will have some good tools 
to do this, but uh, yeah, my blade hasn't broke yet. So because I scored it, I'm able to stay on that line a lot easier. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Just take your time, don't get in a rush. You want this to look nice. You want that support, and that's why uh, you might wanna make this cut, the small cut here first. I'm just gonna take my time, maybe score it some more. Every time I score it, I'm taking more material off. And uh, again, if you got some better cutting tools, use them. We want to show you that you can just do this with a razor knife. It's tedious. Now I can heat it up and burn through it a little faster if you want to do that and play around with that. That's fine. I do. It does seem to, without heating it up, a little bit cleaner cut. I'm pushing it, you know, as my groove gets deeper I'm able to push harder and cut better because I know I'm not gonna slip and um, get out of my groove there it goes it's kind of getting cut in where I can use the blade like a saw okay so I've got a new blade and these blades will go dull pretty fast so don't get uh, cheap on your blades and just change them out because it'll save you some some grief um, and struggle here here we go this thing's starting to cut pretty nicely Feel like it's getting dull again. I haven't cut very long, but um, these nice, sh brand new, sharp edges are just make this process a lot easier. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip it over and see if this. Yeah, it just cuts in really nice. Got it scored so much that this little cut there became easy. All right, now I'll trim this up. Well, most of it will just peel off, but I pretty much have it prepared now for the ultra cool oil cooler uh, to okay, mount. Okay, now we're ready to modify the painted portion of the lower fairing. So we've got to uh, cut the uh, pivot arms off of the air door. You want to get these nice and flush with the outside, and then we're going to be drilling two holes. So I also, on, on this piece here, I took a, uh, a chisel and I just scraped the uh, 
excess of the old uh, double-sided tape off. You don't have to get all of it off, just get the foam pieces. If there's a little bit of stickiness left, that's fine. We give you um, plenty of industrial double-sided tape to um, reapply the um, air duct after you're done. That's what this red is here. And But we're not gonna do that yet. We'll, we'll fit it and test it and make sure everything's good before we actually stick it all together and call it, call it good. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna cut off the uh, two pivot arms. And again, I wanna get them flush pretty close because you don't want it interfering um, with this. And again, this isn't gonna be seen. We're just gonna use a hacksaw blade because it's a pretty easy cut. Okay, so I've got that trimmed off, relatively flat, doesn't have to be perfect. Again, it's not gonna show the air duct is gonna fit in here. Um, then I'll save you the time of cutting this one off when we're finished. They're, they're gonna both be cut off. Um, you can take a razor knife and trim any little excess uh, material off, but again, it's just not gonna show, so it doesn't matter. So there's the uh, water line hole here, and we're gonna line up with that, and we're gonna go five and a half inches, and I've already marked it there, five and a half. And then I like to use the ruler to, for the short ones. It's three quarters of an inch. So I've made, made that mark, and I got a pinpoint, and what we're gonna do now is drill our first hole. We're only gonna drill one, check our measurements, and then drill the second one because we want to perfectly align the bolt holes up so that there's no other additional modifications needed and the bolts go in nice and tight. Okay, so again, we've got the five and a half inch from the water uh, line over here and three quarters down. And you can see it's already scored. What I did is a little trick because, you know, we're going to, I'm going to hand drill this to try to do this in a way that everyone can do it. And we're going to take our point. If you have a little pick and just press into our our point we're going to make this these uh, drills as precise as possible so that our holes are, are nice and clean and line up so you can you can do that and then with by hand take a, a, a smaller drill bit and start drilling it and what this will do is keep you from moving around if you're going to hand drill it like i'm about to do and we're going to start pre-drilling it and you can see I can get it get it going so that when I take the actual drill it's not going to move around on me and it's going to be a nice clean drill so let's go ahead and do that all right sixteenths you can see this plastic piece tapers down a little so we got a three quarter inch down from the top here, but the upper one's only gonna be 11 sixteenths, so a sixteenth inch uh, up a closer, and that positions the cooler into a better position. On here with the one one bolt through here, I just wanna check fitment, really be safe and, and you know triple check everything before we go on to the second one. So it's all lined up really nicely. I'm gonna go ahead and take it uh, off now and it threads through the plastic which is really what we want we want this nice and tight if you end up getting off a little bit on your adjustments or your measurements and have to elongate the holes a little bit it's not the end of the world but ideally we get these all nice and tight and we're threading through the plastic here so the next measurement and double check everything so Three and a half inches should be your center to center on your ultra cool heat exchanger. We make these, they're pretty darn accurate. Just double check it and make sure that the heat exchanger is three and a half inches like it should be. And again, so that's center to center. So I made another mark here for our second hole. 
three and a half inches center to center. And now this one, we're only going 11 sixteenths, not three quarters of an inch, okay? And again, to really get that pinpoint accuracy, I'm going to take a pick and push and start that, that spot so that we don't get off and we don't have to elongate our holes. So the pick goes and then I'm gonna take a drill bit by hand and get it started. Do it a couple times. And again, you can do this however you're comfortable. This is just a little trick that we know if you're gonna hand drill it like I am with a, just a little cordless drill, we don't get off. So now we're ready for the second one. It's already lined up. It's gonna be pretty hard to um, get out of that spot. So let's go. So one thing I need to mention is the drill bit size. So you can try a quarter inch drill bit and that will hold the bolts in here tight. Now, it's pretty, it's pretty tough to get these lined up precisely and you're going into an aluminum heat exchanger. So it's good to have uh, a little bit of play. So I actually like using a 932nd um, drill bit. But if you wanna try a, a quarter inch first and then check and see how everything lines up, you wanna be able to pretty much put these in by hand um, to make sure that you're not stripping, um, you're gonna cross thread the aluminum or, you know, and, and strip them out or anything. But, uh, so I've, I've got them started in here. Um, you don't need to go real tight or anything, just kinda get it snug. This whole thing when it's finished is, is very snug. But let's get now to, we've got the, the fairing modified. We've cut the pivot arms off the air door. We've drilled and got the, the cooler mounted. And so now what we need to do is take our uh, modified air duct and we need to drill two holes that are gonna fit into the heat exchanger when this piece goes together. So it's gotta go here and here and we need to line that up. So I'm not gonna tape it in yet, but I'm gonna pull it in. And then I'm gonna, I've got it bolted in here fairly snug. And I'm gonna pull up the heat exchanger a little bit so I can see where they line up. And again, you gotta, we're not taped in yet, so we gotta hold it um, and do all this at the same time. So I'm gonna mark center here. You can see, I can see this one. I've already marked it. And then this one, I'm gonna have to pull up a little bit more. And we'll talk about that when we drill the hole. And I'm gonna mark that. And again, you're marking it center on center with the heat exchanger holes. So now, once we get those marked, we pop it out. Okay, and then we've got our marks here, center and center for the heat exchanger. I'm gonna check it. It's the three and a half inches. And that's good. Now, we've got a little lip here on the inside. So ideally, it's not mandatory, but ideally we're gonna put lock washers uh, on the inside and get it in between uh, the fan bracket, the heat exchanger, just to make a nice little flat uh, surface and, and give more support to the plastic. Again, it's not mandatory, but we're gonna, we're gonna try to do that. But we also, um, on the painted portion, we went three quarters of an inch down on this side and only 11 sixteenths here. So we wanna kinda angle it the same. So on the top side, we do wanna go all the way up to that lip and then you'll have to carefully hold it. And I'm looking at my mark center and then giving enough room for my lock washer and I'm marking a center spot. Back over here, we went about a sixteenth of an inch uh, lower down and we want to do the same. So again, I'm looking at that. I'm looking at the center to do that and I mark it. Now before we drill or anything, I've got my nice marks. I'm going to use a pick 
to mark that spot and push in there so that when I drill, we can keep it lined up and not bouncing all over the place. So I'm gonna do it a couple of times and get a nice uh, good spot to start before I drill. And hopefully things will line up. If they don't line up perfectly, I may elongate the holes a little bit, or I may go ahead and go to the bigger size. I'm not gonna go all the way through, so I'm gonna go ahead and do it on this flat surface. But my pin mark should allow me to, to get started here and stay in my mark. All right, I'm ready to go through now. Okay, so now we'll take a look at how this lines up. Pull everything in. Now it will have to flex down a little. That one lines up. So that lined up pretty nicely. I don't know if you can see here. I believe, and you'll be able to tell. Now you don't want to force it. Uh, like again, these um, the heat exchangers, aluminum threads, and you can strip it out. So we don't want to do that. The reason I like going with the quarter inch is it will make the whole process of, of putting in the, the lock washers easier because it's going to kind of, it's small enough to thread into the plastic. Now, I'm not going to put them in the first time here. I'm just going to double check and make sure it bolts up because we still have to tape the um, double-sided tape the this piece back in when we're ready but the quarter inch is a nice size um, I can get those bolts in when it's all ready to go I can I can go a little farther and put some lock washers in and hold it at the right angle and keep them from falling out but at this point I haven't got them got it bolted in yet I'm still checking it so I'm gonna see if I can get and again, don't, don't force anything. You want to go in straight. There, I can feel it going. That one's going in nice. So this side here, I think I'm going to take this bolt out because I'll be able to see. I've got this bolt in. Does it line up close enough? And yeah, it looks really good. Um, I think I'm going to be able to get that in there without elongating the hole or anything. So I'm going to go ahead and try. Check things like that before you try. You, again, you just don't want to strip out these heat exchangers. Um, and not a lot of room here to, to, to use a longer tool, so a short one or a little Allen. Um, we don't want to have to put much pressure on this anyway. If we're having to force it, then, then it's probably not going in correctly. But this one looks like it's going to line up, so that's great. Um, don't freak out if they don't line up perfectly. You can, I would suggest getting one in if it fits good, and then if the other one's off a little, you can elongate the hole. And again, we're going to put washers underneath this plastic, but um, everything's looking fairly good. I'm going to go ahead and just snug them and give it a final check before we uh, make this permanent. And you can see without the lock washers, it's kind of bending in. So I'm not going to go too much on that one. Um, I'll go ahead and tighten these up. Just snug them. We're going to put thread locker on there. But what I'm checking is the fitment of the front plate. We want to make sure it's going in flat. And when we tape it, it's all going to stay flat. If there's anything pushing out uh, dramatically that looks like it's going to cause a problem, you know, you might have to do some more trimming on something, but uh, as of right now, I'd say it's all looking fairly well, and we're about ready to finalize this.
Okay, so we do give you some blue thread locker. It should be enough to do everything in, in, the, in the project. Um, I'm gonna use a regular bottle. I, I already put a little bit on here. I took these out. I'm gonna keep them a little bit loose. We want a little bit of play while we're doing this. And I was able, I was fortunate enough to get these lined up really nice. So I have quarter inch um, uh, drill holes here. And so it's keeping the bolts in nicely. And that'll make things easier. Now, if you have to elongate it and have problems, you could take, um, what we're wanting to do is put lock washers on the, on the back side here to create a little flatter surface. And you can use some scotch tape and tape those in, poke holes through it. Um, it's, it's still a little challenge, but I'll, I'll show you here in a second how I'm gonna do it. And um, the other thing is, you know, we've already prepared our double-sided tape and we're ready now to uh, make this a permanent stick. And this is pressure sensitive tape, so it's gonna, the more you push on it and the harder you push on it, it's gonna, it's gonna secure you know, better. While we're getting everything bolted up um, on the heat exchanger, we don't wanna push, we don't want this to adhere. So I'm gonna take it loose, but don't, don't push on it yet. Um, until we got all of our um, all of our bolts uh, loctited and the lock washers in place and this whole tricky little assembly is all finished. So now that's exposed, we're ready to go. I'm gonna put, uh, again, this is a little easier because I was able to use just a quarter inch. And, um, but I'm gonna just put a drop of uh, blue thread locker you know, this is almost not necessary because there's not the vibration here on this fairing um, like on another part. Now, of course, gravity, I'm going to put my lock washer in. But if this turns into a struggle, it's not mandatory to use the lock washers or even the thread locker. So don't sweat that if that's a problem. So I'm going to grab it and I'm going to keep my uh, lock washers from falling out. And I'm going to start putting this in place so that I can get my, my lock washers in there and they don't, don't fall out until uh, things get to be a little bit more um, in place. Now I can come over and they're in place and hopefully they'll stay there. Get a feel for my thread, got that one started. This one I might have to push down a little bit. Again, just be extra careful not to cross thread the aluminum threads. And it's going nicely. If it lined up before on the dry fit, it sure should line up now. I like these little uh, ball tip uh, Allens, even though I can't go in straight once I get it started. Okay. So I got that. My thread locker is already on here and a lock washer. You don't have to crazy tighten these. You'll see, it's, it's amazingly, this whole heat exchanger is extremely secure in here. It's sandwiched in and um, it's not going anywhere. You think, oh, it's going in plastic. Just wait till you feel how solid it is. So I'm just getting it good and snug. And of course the thread locker is gonna keep it from coming loose. So I don't have to put, put a crazy amount of force on there. And uh, now I'm pushing hard on, the, on my tape. Make sure you do that. Everything's lining up really nicely. Um, so there we go. We've got um, the ultra cool oil cooler now installed with the modifications. And this uh, fairing is now ready to go back onto the bike with just these parts. You'll, you'll feed it around. Uh, if you've got water, a water cooled uh, system with the radiator lines and all that, you'll be able to bring this in and, and move it and feed it around and get it all secure onto the fairing. And then you'll put, uh, 
uh, this plastic piece here and start putting it all uh, assembled onto the bike. So we are ready to put this fairing on, uh, but there is the glove box piece that will interfere with the cooler and this has to be trimmed. So I'm gonna show you how to measure that and make the appropriate uh, cut so that it will fit with our cooler. So I put the air duct in here. Uh, this is the air duct for the radiator. And it fits in here nice and snug. You, um, it kind of presses on the heat exchanger, really locks it in, which I like. Um, if you need to, you can trim a little edge on, on this so it's not pushing on the heat exchanger. But if you can get it bolted in, I think the pressure on there is actually good. It really just locks it in place. So don't trim that unless you uh, really have to. So we've got to trim what they Harley calls the uh, glove box. And you know, which you can have a glove box there. Most of them come with a cover. So let me show you how to make the measurements. It's actually quite simple now. So this little slot is for the air door um, little pivot uh, arm. And what we're gonna do is, I've already marked it, but I'm gonna show you how I did it. From the edge of there, right? Make a, make a mark. And then we're gonna take a ruler and line it up with this uh, little slot here on the top. So that's straight and then draw a line mark all the way to the edge and it starts bending around and you can bend it around a little um, and we're going to make another measurement this measurement from this edge where the uh, water line comes out we're going to go about two and a half inches okay two and a half inches we mark it and then from where we drew it in here, you can just hand kind of make a nice uh, swooping line. And this is our cut. We're gonna cut it from this edge through here, straight down, and that'll allow the heat exchanger to fit in here and not interfere. So let me show you how to do that. So we're just gonna cut it with a razor knife. This is actually uh, a rubber, the glove box is, is rubber, and it cuts fairly easily. So I'm gonna, uh, I like to score it and, I'll, and I think I'll, and I will do that again. The scoring just kind of gets rid of uh, the oops where you're going along and you think you're, you're good and you're starting to get aggressive with a cut and then you, and you, go out of your, your, your mark. By scoring it, keeps you in that line. Now, I've done it once. Now I can start getting more aggressive with it. And a good razor blade will really just kind of cut through this rubber. But just take your time. This is one of those projects that it's... Um, the challenge is there's a lot of steps and it takes time to cut, make cuts like this, but it's not difficult. And if you find yourself getting impatient, then maybe you need to step away and come back to it. So you can see I started really push through this rubber and start cutting it once I feel comfortable and start feel like, feeling like I've uh, got my score marks. I spent a lot of time trying to perfect these measurements and cuts. So this should be very accurate and give you the, the space that uh, you need to build a to bolt this back on with the oil cooler installed. Okay, I'm about to get to my 90 degree point. Of course, I'll stop there. 
got that done. And for the most part, this isn't really going to be seen. So don't worry about, you know, being a perfectionist on this cut either. It's going to look nice. This, this cut you're making is going to not really be visible on the bike. I'm going to flip this uh, blade around and if you didn't start with uh, a new razor blade make sure you do brand new sharp blade really makes a big difference cutting through stuff like this and they get dull fairly quickly and same thing pushing down sawing it close all right so I've got it cut if you want to shave it a little bit and clean it up yeah you can do that um, getting rid of this excess rubber and things like that um, sometimes you can scrape it but the rubber stays a little bit, so probably just want to just cut off little extra pieces. So let's see how that fits. Now this snaps in on the one side, and then it's going to bolt in here. Uh, it's pretty close I'm gonna this is probably good because as I bolt it in now if, if it's after you're finished if it's still hidden you know I could take a little bit off of here let's go ahead and do that I'll just kind of mark it where I want a little bit more material off Taking a little extra material is um, easier than the initial cut. And again, trim all this, pull it off, cut it, trim it, whatever you got to do to get it nice and clean. But for the most part, oops, that snapped in. Let's see if it bolts in and how it looks. Remember, you got the three bolts. Now, this is going to have to come back off to go onto the bike. But we want to test it because it's a lot easier to do these little modifications and, and precise. So when you're happy with the fit, uh, whether you leave a little gap here or you end up trimming this to get it flatter. Um, again, I personally, I would leave it just like this. It's fine. You can't see it with the frame. Um, but you're going to need to take the glove box uh, back off once you've modified it and you're happy and uh, take the uh, radiator air duct off and then you can take the cooler mounted to the fairing put it on the bike get your water cooling uh, secured and mounted with the lines which you don't have to unhook uh, any of that um, and then put your air duct on your glove box on and finish it up of course attach the hoses to the uh, ultra cool 
uh, oil adapter and you'll be ready to go. But the final look, you know, like here's the front, um, just looks a lot nicer than our old system. Uh, this is, this kit here does require um, quite a bit of look, you know, put your cap on there, but it it's a nice clean look. Uh, in my opinion, looks like it belongs on the motorcycle, doesn't look odd, all nice and secure, using the air duct from the air door to really get that air through there, which will make it even more efficient, especially when the fans aren't running. It'll just constantly be forcing air through there and keeping your engine ultra cool.